Hey, so I've just started recording this call and I guess this call is all about uh, getting people to events. So um, bringing people to events and I think it's it's a great example, you know, where we're third session in yet um, I know we missed last week because of the public holiday. So we're four weeks into when people said that they were up for the challenge and yet we've seen over a 50% drop off rate. So it just goes to show you that that's unfortunately the nature of the game in network marketing. And I guess your job is to keep people enthused. And um, what we're gonna talk about today is bringing people to events. And there's been a lot of frustrations um, from people in the last couple of weeks about getting people to events, especially launch parties. Um, so, you know, I just think it's a, it's, a, it's a topic that's on everyone's mind. So I don't have slides for you today, uh, but I do have some notes and I will put up a video later um, where basically all this uh, came from, which is Eric Worry. So Eric Worry is a network marketing guru and um, he basically says that meetings make money. Um, so if you're thinking about summer kickoff, look, I know that there are things that crop up, you know, like funerals, you know, te terrible things and you cannot make things work sometimes. However, um, if you want this to work, you've got to realize that you've got to be at the event, but you've got to bring your people too, if that makes sense. So meetings do a lot of things. Uh, one of the things that they do uh, generally for you is social proofing. So I think when we were going back to uh, connecting or talking to people, remember how I said that people have a story in their head about you? You know, uh, a, a lot of the time I get, oh, I can't do what you do, Heidi, because I didn't have 27 kilos to lose, right? And so that's their story in their head. Little do they know that there's people that are very successful in this business that actually haven't lost a kilo yet, right? But that's the story in their head. So if I can link them with that third person that hasn't lost a kilo that still has their success, then that builds their belief. So meetings do exactly the same thing. They build this person, I guess it gives them that third party validation. Um, so getting people to your launch parties, getting people on these calls, getting people, um, uh, to summer kickoff to your core events like UIA, uh, IC Uni celebration, um, that's going to give those people that third party validation because they know you, they have a story about you. But hey, if you can put uh, somebody else up on stage sharing their story, how they're successful, then that's giving that third party validation. Also, when you're in an event, and you're excited and there's lots of other people there, it's giving you some social proof that this works, that people are involved in it. And also hopefully the event that you bring them to is full of excitement, which most people's day-to-day -day job is not very exciting, right? So if you can bring them somewhere that is exciting, uh, they'll want to be a part of that. Um, I'm just going to minimize my screen so I can see the chat. So anytime you want to chat with me, um, just pop, pop a little chat up there, but we will open it for questions later. So reason number one why people don't come to events is they said yes to get rid of you, basically. So um, they never really intended on coming. And the reason they didn't intend on coming is that something else in their life was more important. So it's your job to build value in the event. Okay, so sometimes when we're, invent when we're inviting people to events, we apologize. You know, I know you're really busy, but, um, you know, uh, I'm really sorry that this is late notice, but we're apologizing before we're even inviting them to this event. So, you know, yep, people definitely live busy lives. So they're coming home from a launch party. Uh, they're coming home from work and we want them to be at a launch party. We haven't really told them why we want them there. We've just invited them. We might have flicked them a message. 
We might have done a generic Facebook event. Um, but we haven't really explained why we want them there. And so when they get home, uh, yeah, they've said yes to you, but they've really lost motivation because you haven't built the value in why they should actually be there. Does that make sense? Just nod at me if that makes sense. Um, another reason why people don't want to turn up to launch parties is that they're nervous. They're nervous because they're going to walk into a room full of strangers that they don't know. Um, you know, and no one likes doing that. And we don't usually get drunk at launch parties. So, you know, that can be nerve wracking just walking in stone cold, <laughs> stone cold sober into a room full of strangers, um, having to maybe expose why you need these products. So when we are approaching our prospects, we need to approach them with absolute certainty, um, enthusiasm, urgency and give them lots and lots of compliments. So definitely don't be apologizing to people. A, a great um, a great phrase that you can that you can use and you know I like my little catchphrases is if I would you. So um, if I was to give you an exclusive invite to this uh, meeting that we have on Tuesday night where lots of people are transforming not only their health but their lives, would would you be interested in coming? So you're giving somebody an out straight away. Um, if I invited you to this executive function where we get dressed up and we have fun, would you come? And so when they say yes, because most of them will at this point say yes, it's now ch your chance to dig deeper and really explain what the event is and start to build value in it, okay? And so when they say yes, I'll attend, make sure that you're confirming the venue with them. So do you know where, I'm just giving an example of our Tuesday meeting tomorrow, do you know where Colorado Services Beach Club is? Do you want me to send you the address or uh, send you a drop pin, you know, and then they say, yes, actually, I'm not really sure where that is. So, you, you know, you're following up, you're giving them that drop pin. Now, where are you leaving from? You know, asking them where they're, well, I'm leaving from the city. So you'll probably take about an hour to get there by public transport. So you're needing to leave at maybe uh, 6 o'clock at the latest. You know, it's a 7.30 meeting. And they're like, yep, yep, yep. And so they tell you which bus route they're going on. You're talking them through it. You, you, you're building the value in the event, the importance of them getting there on time. And so when you get there, what I want to do is I'm going to meet you in the lobby 15 minutes early at 7.15. So they, they now almost have a job to get there on time at 7.15 because you're expecting them to meet you in the lobby. Yeah. Does anyone want to have some questions about that? Just unmute your line. No questions. So when you're also running a launch party for the first time, another great line, well, another great uh, thing to pull on is, if you love me. <laughs> So your friends, your family, your warm market, if, if, if you loved me. So look at those people that love you in your network and ask for support. Okay, so you, 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 know, you, um, you might get your sponsor to help you with this and I, w I will talk about when a sponsor gets involved. But, um, you know, uh, maybe you have your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, and you're putting a launch party on for the first time. So you're calling those people and say, look, mum, you know, I've been doing these products. I've lost over five kilos. I'm feeling better. And now I'm thinking that I may actually try and have a crack at this business. You know, I'm seeing lots of people before me go and, and they're having great success. And so the next step is for me to hold what we call a launch party or a tasting party, whatever you want to call it. And... I would just really like it if you could come and support me. I don't want you to buy anything. I just want you to come, okay, and just see what they say. And the same with your distributors. So the people that are in your business, you want to get them to events. You want to get distributors to events. It starts to build their belief as well, right? And hopefully they bring some guests with them. But um, asking your distributors if, 
um, a way to get the bums on seats is if they could bring something. Okay, so, um, you know, I'm just looking at the screen here and I'm seeing, seeing Woody. So, Woody, um, I really want you to come to my launch party. Uh, actually, do you have any of those chocolate decadence bars? Because I've run out. Can you bring some? And he says, yeah. So when he gets home from work and he's tired and he's lost motivation and he's had a few no's with isogenics, he will still come to that event because he knows that I'm expecting him to bring the isoline bars. Does that make sense? So getting them to bring something. Um, and I guess the concept here is detail. Okay. So when you're inviting everyone that you have detail, uh, you know, you're detailing how, how important the event is. You're detailing how to get to the event, what time they have to leave, what time you're meeting them. And you're detailing it with your distributors at what you need them to bring. Okay. So it's not something just generic. This is a planned event. This is an important event. This is what you need them to bring. Make sense? Okay, so um, with your distributors, uh, I've also had some um, leaders, I guess, would coming to me quite frustrated that people perhaps, um, what's the word? I guess they're feeling a little bit like a monkey show. You know, people are coming to watch but not necessarily being present. They're not bringing their guests. Um, and I think this is where we need to take ownership of where we are in our business. And if that is happening over and over again, there must be something that we're doing not to support that person. So what I ask people to do is, um, you know, I first say, well, how, 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 are you, how have you taught these people to invite people to events? So go through those steps that I just went through with you. It's like, how do you build value in this event? You know, their friends probably have no idea what isogenics is all about. They have no idea about what cleansing is. They don't need to lose five kilos. How important is this event to that person? And so it's really about, you know, getting that person and saying, look, who are your top 10 people that you really feel will support you or perhaps really need these products? And they write those 10 people out just like, you know, we would when we're going to uh, try and help them become consultant. And so with those 10 people together holding their hand, you start inviting those people to the events. And that may be, um, you know, yes, one, we set up a Facebook event, right? But that's very generic. Number two, um, we detail a message to send out to people. Number three is we look at those 10 people as individuals and we start building the value in that particular event for that person, okay? So it's not just a, hey, um, I'm having this info night, I've lost lots of weight, please come along, and just waiting for all of these people to magically get what you're saying and come and drop on your doorstep. It's like ringing individuals personally um, and explaining why, you know, the transformation you've had, if they've even noticed. I mean, sometimes I think people post so much about nutritional cleansing that people just turn them off. You know, I had a friend, um, he's actually just signed up, but three years ago um, I spoke to him about the business and it obviously wasn't his time. And um, he said to me, just when we're up in Queensland, he says, oh, yeah, I just turned you off, you know, on Facebook. I was obviously annoying him, like it wasn't resonating with him, but it wasn't until I caught up with him again on a personal level, asking about his family, that he started to ask me about isogenics, and then he went to his first Super Saturday and he's enrolled today, right? So everyone has their time, but I obviously hadn't, when I spoke to him about business, I hadn't built enough value in it to get into an event. So it was an event that got him over the line, if that makes sense. Um, so what was I talking about? Completely lost my train of thought. So we need to help our people bring people to events. And if that's not happening, then you have to take some ownership for that. And how did you help that person invite anybody? Right? So if you're getting launch parties that have been cancelled because nobody's turned up, 
what did you do to actually help that person invite people? Don't forget, it's going to be a pretty daunting and scary task to invite people to a party you might not have, have ever seen. You know, I'm asking people to bring people to summer kickoff and they've never been to summer kickoff themselves. So myself has to take some ownership about that, um, you know, and be helping my distributors I guess, sell this event to people because like Eric Worre says, money, events make money. And it's, he says that an event, getting one person to an event will cause a residual of a, a hundred, a thousand dollars in that, a um, thousand dollars in that year. Not directly necessarily from that particular person, but if you had, um, you know, if you had a hundred people come to the event, a hundred thousand dollars will be seen in your business um, up to around a million dollars. Is that accurate? So if that makes sense, and it's not necessarily the act of those hundred people, but within those hundred people, the acts that occur following that event will equal a hundred thousand dollars. So, you know, you have to grasp the importance of getting people to events. And so it's all about creating an event culture and, you know, number one, well, let's just say that all roads need to lead to that event. So everything you're talking about need to lead to this event. So let's just talk about SKO because it's in, uh, what, three weeks' time. And I see people selling tickets and myself, I'm buying up tickets because I know that every person that comes into the into that event, you know, the odds are that a, th a thousand dollars, uh, $1,000 will be made in my business. So, you know, a $150 ticket, um, and yeah, I'm fortunate enough to be able to um, shout some people some accommodation and whatnot, but, um, you know, to invest $150 back into your business for the sake of that person starts telling us we'll bring 1000 then that's a smart business decision, right? And sometimes people need that little push to get to the events because you yourself haven't built enough um, value in that particular event. So God knows what they're thinking, you know, to spend a weekend in Melbourne to buy flights, to get accommodation um, and, and a ticket on top of that. You know, we could be talking about $1,000 for this particular person. Why do they need to be there? So what sort, of a, what sort of culture are we breeding? So when we talk about an event culture, is number one is that you need to be more committed than anyone else in your team. And so what do I mean by that is you obviously need to go. You need to be telling people that you're going to be going and you need to be bringing people with you, okay? Number two, um, you know, you need to demonstrate it. So, again, it goes back to that same point, point. You know, have you registered early for this event? How long have you had your tickets for? You know, I had six tickets in my back office and I've had them for about eight months knowing that I was going to fill them and I filled them plus more, right? So, um, and also just making it happen. I know things are chaotic sometimes, you know. Uh, I know money can be tight sometimes. And, you know, I've had people tell me, how do, how do I um, make my spouse understand that I need to be at that event? You know, um, and the way that you make your spouse uh, understand why you need to be at that event is that you don't necessarily make him understand. Um, but if he's worried about money that is going to be spent on the event, why don't you go out and, and make two uh, and sell two president's packs? And make, you know, $370, $400 there on the spot and pay for your ticket and your flight, right? That's how you get people to understand. You actually do the job. And once you're doing a job, you'll understand why you need to go and learn how to progress with the job. Um, Sky, you've said you drag him along to summer kickoff. That's what I'm doing. I actually advise not to. Um, you know, my husband's, what, four years in with me. And um, I've said this a lot and I've put this up in terms of relationship advice. Your husband doesn't understand, doesn't need to understand what you're doing. You know, Lyle didn't know what I was doing when I went to work and I stuck defib pads on people and I didn't come home and say, oh my God, it was so exciting. We had a cardiac tamponade today and we had, 
You know, he didn't need to understand that. Just like I didn't understand when he used to try and show me pictures of holes in construction sites. Like, sorry, that's boring. And so the same with network marketing. Although it's exciting, although it's amazing, although it's wonderful and you're immersed in the culture, he doesn't need to be. What he needs to be is just accepting of you wanting to be immersed in that culture. So, you know, I be careful dragging my husband to an event. Um, mine usually stands up the back. <laughs> I think he just goes for the free beer, to be honest. I'm taping this. It's going up on YouTube. But, um, you know, yeah, just, just be careful with that, dragging someone along to an event. Um, if they've built enough value in it, they'll want to come along, okay? So uh, number one was be committed than anyone else in your team. Number two was to demonstrate. So have your tickets registered. Um, you know, you're not just talking about the event. You're actually making it happen. Number three is intensity. Are you fired up? Are you in their face? Are you, you know, and, and my people that are on this call will know, you know, I've sent them messages and I've explained why they need to be there and here is, here's where we're staying and this is what we're fired up. I'm excited. I'm excited to bring them. Um, number four is have laser focus, you know. Um, it's more important. Uh, he says, oh, why is this more important than um, important not to go, you know. So how are you, how is this, you know, and, and again, getting that across to people with that culture about that events make money. And they've come to you and they said, look, we really want to make money. We really want to make this work. Well, how the hell are you going to make it work? You need to be at that event and you need to bring your people to that event. Okay. Um, repetition, just pound it and pound it and pound it and pound it and pound it until, you know, eventually you have a downline that is, is at that event. Number six is that you need to have what we call a verbal commercial. So, you know, uh, when people say to your downline, like if someone says to, to Woody or Chelsea, you know, why are you going to summer kickoff? They're saying exactly the same thing as me, right? So you need to have a verbal commercial going on within your downline. So if anyone comes and says something to you about why you would go to summer kickoff or why I need to go to a launch party, you, you guys have the same response, okay? Um, the vision, and the vision again is going back to meetings make money, you get one person there, that person's going to build a thousand dollars in your business over the next, over the next year. You know, let's get 10 people there. Let's get you paid. Um, you need to have a game plan. So it goes back to how I was saying, um, you know, how are we going to make this happen? And so as you as a sponsor are helping your distributors invite people to events, um, stories, so demonstrate stories of people that have been to an event and where they are now, the people that have not been to the event and where they are now, okay? So demonstrate with stories about, about this. Um, he talks about inclusion or exclusion, if you like, and I put up a little video today on the ANZ group um, with this particular bit because a lot of times people don't really like what I say. They get a little bit offended. I'm pretty black and white. Um, and so when people come to me and say, look, I just don't have the money or I just, you know, I'm, ha I'm having this, I'm having that, I, I, call the, I call BS on it basically because when I first went to my event, I didn't have the money, I didn't have the time. I definitely hadn't built value in the event or no one had built that value for me. Um, but I heard the leaders over and over again saying, if you want to build this business, events make money. And so um, I was at that event, whether it was um, sleeping on someone's couch, whether it was borrowing money to get to the event, whether it was having six, seven different people look after my children whilst I went to the event, whilst it was leaving Lyle behind whilst I went to Vegas to the event. <laughs> that was a good one. Um, you know, I made it happen. So really cool call people on it. If you really want to make this business work, then, you know, you need to get to the event and I, I'm not buying your stories, right? This is just a story. You are making a choice not to come to the event and yet you are saying to me that you want to make money or that you want to be a millionaire or 
No, I can't. Sorry, that's Sammy. No, I'm on a call. Off you go. Um, and recognition, so recognising people for going. Um, you know, and I guess that creates a little bit of peer pressure for other people because um, they'll get, a, what, what do they call it these days, FOMO, fear of missing out. Um, and make it fun, you know, like recognition and peer pressure, make it fun. People need to be at the event. People want to be at the event and why that is. So that's all I'm going to go on about because I think that's enough points for you. And as I said, I'll pop up that video as well. Um, but let's just open the floor for some questions. Is there really free beer at the events, Alex? Alex, Alex, Alex. Well, you're lucky you're going with a millionaire. <laughs> There's always free beer at my table. <laughs> but, yeah, at some of the events there are. Sorry, Sammy's just not sleeping. So, yeah, let's open for, let's unmute your lines and let's have a discussion, huh? Some people generally can't afford to go. I wouldn't hold that against. I'm not saying that you hold that against them, but they will beg, borrow, and steal to get that event if they see that it's important. And that's your job to make them see that it's important. I, do, you know, and this is where you really separate people that are interested and committed, right? You can help them along the way when you have some more money or what have you, you know, like I'm pretty fortunate I'm able to give some people um, some money and things like that. But you know what? The, I have never been bought a ticket. And I find the people that I do buy tickets for are generally the people that don't see the value in the event. So I actually discourage, I don't teach people to buy people tickets although I said it was a great investment in your business, they need to meet you somewhere, you know. So maybe you buy them a ticket, but they buy their accommodation and their flight. Or maybe you help them with their flight or maybe you carpool or, you know, you can meet people halfway, but they need to show some level of commitment. And, um, yeah, it has cost me over $2,000 to get me and my partner there and we're both excited. Yeah, and it is, and it's a tax deduction. But it's, you know, what I'm telling you in three, to, three five years' time that you're on a six-figure income, what is that $2,000? I mean, you go to any university, you go to any, um, or any personal development course or any course, it's going to cost you money. Um. Chelsea, would I ask family to come to summer kickoff or just a launch party if they're not interested? I wouldn't, uh, no one's going to turn up to summer kickoff and spend that $2,000 if they're not interested. So I'm not sure that um, that's really an issue. I would get them to come to a launch party, but oh, if you paid, no, I wouldn't pay if they're not interested. You need people that are desperate, just saying, "Oh my God, I'll, I'll, I'll get my mum and my auntie and my sister to babysit on Friday." And you need to see them problem solving to make it possible for themselves before you, you know, kind of meet them halfway with the with the costs and things. You need to you need to see that they see value in the event as well. And you know, I say events make money, and I say that one person gets, you know, will bring you a thousand dollars into that. Um, into your business, but I guess that's only if they've shown the interest in it. And sometimes, you know, you can bring people to celebration or summer kickoff and they definitely see what they didn't see. But um, if they're not open to seeing it, they're not going to see it. Does that make sense? So they've got to be open to, to seeing it or to wanting to see it. Can someone unmute the line? I'm getting bored talking to myself. Hi, I'll talk to you, Heidi. Thanks. 
What do you want to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> Ask me questions about this. Like, I know, Eve, you just went up to Brisbane to summer kickoff. You got some people there. So tell us about that experience and, and how you went inviting these people and, and how you moved yeah. heaven and earth to get there, I guess. And I know yeah, you well, moved heaven and earth yeah. to get to summer kickoff too. So talk about that. Um, yeah, I went up to Super Saturday on, um, on, on Saturday and I, I, um, I bought three tickets for my family who um, I knew, that they didn't know at the time, but I knew I wanted them to be there. And, um, I, you know, they were $37, so it was a bit different, but I just said, you're coming. Um, it's in your local area, no excuse. And they were like, oh, okay. And um, they, they turned up and they, I was really, really excited to have them there. And they, they were all, you know, a bit sort of um, hesitant when they first came in, but by the end of it, they were, you know, putting their hand up and clapping along and cheering, and they got they got really excited. And I was able to hook them up with people in the local area, which was my main goal for getting them up there. Um, and we just met some awesome people too, and it's just and it built my belief as well. I I had felt a bit flat the last couple of weeks, so it was really great for me to get my mojo back and feel come away from that feeling inspired, which I knew I would. Um, and then I came out of that going, right, I'm going to some kickoff. So, um, yeah, and I, Jackson got up there and said, someone will be selling their tickets. And what do you know? Of course, you know, they're selling tickets left, right and centre all over Facebook at the moment. So I just, the first one I saw, I just jumped in and said, hold it for me. Give me five minutes. And went off and borrowed some money and and um, and bought the ticket and, and put my flights on the credit card, which I crossed my fingers and it went through. <laughs> I haven't booked a combination yet, but I'll, I'll get there. So, yeah, I'm excited. I can't wait. Awesome. Yeah, great story. And and are your, um, is your niece coming to summer kickoff? Can you get her there? Uh, I, I might have to talk to her mother about that. She's an you know, unemployed um, ex-student at the moment. She's just dropped out of uni. So, yeah, money's a, bit a real issue. It would have to be her mum that would get her there, but I can certainly hit her up for sure. Um, I know they're about to go over to the UK for a big um, sort of six-week family trip. So I, I'm, I, I've just written it down. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because that's the most important thing is not only to get yourself there, but to get yeah, yeah. downline there, right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I'm going to look into my, my downline and just see um, my little downline and see if there's anyone there who's, who's keen to come and talk to them about it. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for that. No worries. Who's got spare summer kickoff tickets that haven't been assigned yet? I have two. You have two, Selena. So would it, what's your plan on, I guess, have you picked anything up from this call or what's your plan to get some people there? They're not actually mine, they're Ingrid's. Sorry, I'm just... <laughs> oh, yes. <Yeah. laughs> on behalf of it. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, she double booked herself. So, yep. yeah, like I know you're just back in Mexico and you spent some time here in Australia. So you do, what is your plan with those? With what? So I'm a kickoff? The tickets. Um, well, I... I don't know, to be fair, I have, I don't really have anyone locked in for summer kickoff, but I do have a few people, um, prospects willing to invest actually into going to IC Uni or Uni in Action, whatever's happening in Brizzy. That's sold out. Um, I know. So I need to hunt down tickets. Uh huh. So if anyone's got tickets to that, definitely let me know because I've got a few friends that are willing to go. But um, I just wanted to touch on I saw uni in Sydney when I was there. We had like, I think 11 people end up going, which was really cool. I used the fact that I was only in Sydney for a few weeks to my advantage. That seemed to help people get there. But what I was most excited about is I, um, I brought a friend there and She's someone that I've always wanted in my business because I love her very much. We met each other when we volunteered in Ghana a few years ago. And she was like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, look, 
I just want you to come to this event. I've brought you a ticket. It's 150 bucks. Don't waste my money. If you honestly don't think it's for you, then I'll never have to say anything about isogenics again, but I think you'll love it. So she bit her tongue and came along and it was the likes of Ashley Good and Jen that really inspired my friend and she resonated well with them. So I think another point of going to events and taking people with you is they might be tired hearing from you, but maybe someone else from the event might um, strike something in them or resonate better with them. And um, yeah, it worked well. She just finished her 30 days and loving it and willing to continue. So that was my nugget from getting a person who was like, shut up about isogenics. She went there and, and, and loving it. She's in ISO body challenge and healthy mind and body as well and just really, really, really enjoying it. So. And can we get a summer kickoff? Um, probably not. She actually just moved from Melbourne and she's um, back to back with events between Brisbane and Sydney. She's one that would like to go to Brisbane because she'll be there that weekend. Okay. So I'd like to get her there, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Good, good point. And I just want to, um, I just want to touch on sort of events and go back to launch parties and, and everyone that knows me knows that when I'm mentoring, I, I harp on a lot about launch parties and there was a little theme that kind of annoyed me where there were some leaders saying that you didn't need to build your, your business on launch parties. And people would say to me, but so-and-so didn't do launch parties and so-and-so didn't do launch. But if you look at their downline, the people in their downline were doing launch parties. Like launch parties definitely build your business. They're mini events, they, they leverage, they're, they're absolutely fantastic. And so um, when I was thinking, how do I get people to do launch parties? I thought, you know what, I'll do up this competition. I'll pay for a family to go to Thailand and, um, you know, offer it to my downline and, you know, Oh my God, if I was offered a, I would have won that trip to Thailand if I started this business back when I did um, because I built my business completely to five star on launch parties. And I want you to really take note of that launch party. And I guess I am a little bit disappointed at the lack, I guess, of um, enthusiasm or action that's in there. And, and the reason I did this launch party um, incentive was because I found the same people were being recognised and they're being recognised for stars and they're being recognised for, um, you know, rank advancements and they're being recognised for, um, because they were doing the job, but, you know, already financially the compensation plan was recognising these people. So I thought, how can I recognise people just for simply putting their big girl panties on and getting into action because all of you or most of you, as I said at the beginning of this series, put down as the number one thing you want to get out of this is confidence. And that's not something I could teach you or give you or mentor you. That's something that only results will give you. And I know that results come from action. So I was like, how do I get these people into action? And, and so I want you to revisit that launch party because it's on for another, I think it's, we're in week three and it went for 13 weeks. So you've got another 10 weeks. And all you've got to do, guys, is pull your finger out and get into action with the launch parties. I don't even care if no one turns up. I don't even care if no one signs up. I don't even care if um, you're presenting to your cat at the end of the day. But it teaches you so many skills. If you just did two launch parties, one for you, one for one in your downline, every week for the next 10 weeks, I'm telling you that you have an excellent chance of running in this competition and winning it. Heidi, can I interrupt you for a second? Yeah. Um, I, because I was in that group, your Thailand group, um, and I removed myself from it um, because... I felt, oh, because I live in Mackay, um, I have tried and tried and tried to run launch parties 
and yeah, the same as anyone. I've got no one coming. It's also very hard to get other Mackay people that are doing isogenics to try and come together as a team as much as I've tried to put it out there and, you know, say we're not going to steal your people and all that sort of stuff. So it just became really... Um, like a lot of pressure, I suppose, and disheartening because you're just pouring your heart into trying to make a community and not getting anywhere. So I, I'm definitely one of those people that resigned from that group for that reason. So one th two things. One, you can do it online. So there's an option to do it online. So I know my biggest executive in role. I went through all my executives in my downline the other day and the two biggest oh. executives executive downlines live in a town where no one lives they literally got more cows than people in their town right <laughs> and they are the biggest enrollers and they run their launch parties online okay so that's number one number two and there was a number two just let me think i've got a few <laughs> just in my brain um how are you, Sky? And I and I do say things black and white. So don't take this as though I'm talking just at you because I'm talking to a lot of people when I say, how are you, Sky, ever going to create a community if you just give up? If you yeah. just say, you know what, no one's going to turn up, so who cares? Because you know what, you run them over and over again, eventually someone is going to come and join you. And then that two people becomes three people and that's four, four people and five people. And it might take you five years to get a little community together. But how is that ever going to happen if you just go, you know what, this is too hard. I've got too many excuses. I'm just not going to do it. Because you know what that's telling your downline? You don't have to do it. Because you have, and if you go back to my point about creating an effect culture, you have to be more committed than anyone else on your team. That's number one. And so by saying that it's all just too hard, um, you know, no one's – you know how many launch parties I've done when no one's turned up? And I'm a freaking millionaire. It just happens. But eventually someone will come, you know, and I ran them in the early days and eventually I got people to – like the Chrissy Stobbs, like, the, you know, Lauren Petrovic, like the – um, the people eventually came to my launch parties and then they went and duplicated the same activity because I was doing it consistently because I showed them that I was more committed than anyone else on my team. So I just ask you to take on those points. It's like, you know what, sometimes you're not going to win the competition, but you're definitely not going to win it if you're not in the race to win it. Run them online. Lots of people are having success running online. Okay, all right. Heidi, can I yes. ask a question? Oh, sorry, Sky. No, no, I just said thank you for the ass kicking. <laughs> <laughs> they don't call me Coach Mac for nothing. <laughs> hey, I, can I ask a question? I don't know whether this is the right form. Well, it kind of is because you're coaching us. Um, so I put a post on Facebook last week um, just to test, you know, it was my first time, I, you, I think you saw it, me saying, you know, eight kilos down, feeling amazing, la la. Um, standing by the pool, got my cousin Amelia, hello Amelia, to come over and take the photo. <laughs> and um, I didn't actually get in the pool, but I pretended like I was getting in the pool. Um, and I got 85 comments, 85 likes, and which my, I think is amazing. My 13 year old son is just like going, what? Only 85? Uh, yeah, that's him there. Sure. And, um, and but 35 comments, you know, all going, oh my god, you look amazing. And some of them directly were saying, what are you doing? Um, and some private messaged me. So my strategy was to then create an event out of this. Do you do I just go blanket Facebook saying, to everybody, this is um, I got a lot of comments, or do I get everybody that liked it and send them a private like an event and invite them all? Private. So set yeah. up your event, That's set up thought. your event, and then go private as well. That's what I thought, yeah. And out of 85, I reckon you'll end up with eight people. 10%. Yeah, yeah. And that's why yeah. when people say, oh, I invited three people to my launch party and no one turned up, I say, well, no one's going to turn up. 0.3 of the person will turn up, which is none. <laughs> because 10% of the people that you talk to will generally turn up. <laughs> yeah, right. right? Yeah. You've done all the right things, but it's about 
Eve standing up there time and time again, looking the product of the product time and time again, eventually that that 10% is going to be having such a crap time with their body. Maybe they put their pants on that they wore last season and they look foul and it's going to be their time to then go, yeah, I need to get to one of those. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was, I was talking to a girlfriend today. I said, oh, can we go for a walk on Wednesday? Because obviously, you know, she was one of the people that liked it. She's on my list. And um, just as we were hanging up, she said, oh, and by the way, I've got to talk to you about what you're doing because I, I, I want, I, I, you know, I'm in. So I was like, yes. So, you know, it was definitely worth, worth doing it. So I encourage you, get your swimmers on. <laughs> get your swimmers on, get out there, guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't think my, my bikini is going to sell any 30-day pack. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Old fatty boomba here. Um, <laughs> So there's some stuff happening in the chat. Chelsea Bennett, I did a launch party for a month straight and had people cancel on me every single week and no one showed up. So don't give up, Sky. And Chelsea's been one of our biggest enrollers. Um, Jen has written that, yep, my personal enrolled Lisa, she's a good old stick, drove to Newcastle to attend my launch party on Sunday, feeling more confident each time that I have one. And that's right. Like you, you'll get at my first launch party, I had notes, I like notes and, and a pad and I was completely, um, you know, um, I was going to say something really politically incorrect there, but I'm recording and it's going on YouTube. But, you know, like I was, I was, I was fumbling my way through it. Um, but now people go, oh, my God, you know, you can really talk. It's only because I've practised over and over and over again. I've listened to those podcasts over and over and over again. Um and yeah, Chelsea says, like even Skype in a team, like even do your launch parties online, get your distributors there teaching them how to language things, how to work things. And Adrian, would you would you private message everyone? Yes, I would set up an event, first of all. So a Facebook event, I'd invite my people and then I would send them an invitation. So, hey, you can see that I'm having you know, this on such and such date and I've invited you along. Here's the reasons why I want you to come. Even if it's just to support me, I'm really nervous. It's my first one, um, you know, and if you can't make it, um, which I'd love you to make it, but, you know, do you have any friends that might be interested? So asking for referrals as well. It's really important. So any other questions about events? So you're all bringing somebody to summer kickoff? Heidi? Yeah? For um, online launch parties, would you, like, get you and your upline or downline together and then do like a zoom call or just everyone you definitely want to get someone in your upline that's proficient at doing it for you until you feel confident doing it absolutely yeah. and it's really important with online webinars that you keep them really short um people lose attention span so you guys are probably tuning out already i know that i've been like 40 minutes actually i've been longer than that i've been 50 minutes so i know that people generally can be talked at for a maximum of 20 minutes Right, so it's not something that I would, um, you know, talk at people and talk at people and talk at you want to make it interactive, so you want to present the product and then you want to open it up so people that are asking questions, so their questions are going to come up. But definitely, um, you know, keep the screen moving as well, so having some quick moving slides and before and afters, um, because it's really hard to get energy over a computer screen. But definitely be getting your upline to run it for you or with you. Um, until you feel confident to be doing it on your own. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. You want people on that webinar that's going to be sharing their stories, okay? Yeah. Yeah. I'll be doing that in the next few weeks. <laughs> good, good. And if you are not sure how to run a webinar and you don't have really an upline, you know, you always have me. So you can always reach up to me. You can have a look on YouTube but the webinars that are done by various different people. Um, yeah, so there's lots of ways. So don't just give up. You have to sometimes try a few things until 
something works for you. So these girls in the country, Brie and Bridget, who are like massive enrollers, and honestly, I've, I've done a launch party out there. There is nothing out there. Um, you know, they've they tried some launch parties and that just became a logistic nightmare. And so now they've moved them online and they're having great success with them. And that's duplicating down into their team. But, you know, the one thing is it's consistency. It's absolute consistency. Um, and I look at the people that are doing well within my business and it's consistency. And I know um, Eve was at the Super Saturday in Brisbane and it's like, how many people have been here over 12 months? And there might have been 12 people in the room. And that just goes to show you that people come into this interested, but they don't come in committed. And committed means five years, auto ship flogging a dead horse for a particular time, figuring out what's working for you and your, your network. That's commitment. Being at every event, getting people to events. Hmm. So the hey, Heidi, sorry, just on a sorry there. Yeah, um, just on events, like the only major events I've been to are ISA Uni and UIA in Sydney. I'm only relatively new to the biz side of things. Um, I've got a couple of team in Melbourne and a lot in Tasmania, and I'd really love them to get there as well. Um, is there anything I can be telling them? Like obviously, I'll be you know highlighting the importance of what UIA and ISA Uni did for me, but is there anything else that sets off summer kickoff from those two in, um, in your opinion? I guess summer kickoff is more um, product and uh, oh, I can tell you what you can tell them is that yep. um, the trainers from America are, are incredible. Yep. They're the fastest growing, they're the youngest millionaires the company have ever created. Um, I can't remember what star they are now, but I guess the training that we get from them is far superior than anything we're going to get from from me or anyone else in Australia because we're baby network marketers, you know. Um, these guys are, are going to be absolutely incredible. So if there is an inkling that you perhaps want to do this business, then, you know, we have to go and learn from the best and they're the best. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. All right, guys, is there any other questions? Very quiet tonight. All right, well, we'll leave it there and we'll, um, oh, and on the group, it would be really great is if you're feeling like you're missing something in all of this, if you feel like you want me to get somebody online for you, I might be able to get a special guest on, someone that you really want to hear from uh, that's perhaps doing well in the business and you want to ask some questions, just write on the group or send me a PM and, and I'll make it happen, okay? Anyway, I'll see you next week. I'm going to leave you some tasks for this week. They're big ones. <laughs> see you later.